Hi, Stamper fans. I'm Nan Gerlitz, Independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Bloomington, Illinois, and I am here to help you connect with your people, whether that's gathering to craft together or you making handmade items to share with them. It's all about making and deepening those connections. So let's get to it. All righty. So first up, congrats to Stamper Man, my, my husband, Russ, who made this winning card over the weekend. Um, one by one vote. So awesome. Every vote counts, right? At least here it does. <laughs> um, so congratulations to him. And I love this kind of um, high contrast with the white and the deeper. This is uh, copper clay. So really, really pretty. All right. And then this was my losing card, but we're making it tonight because most of you liked it. Well, not most, I guess. Almost all of you liked it. <laughs> Hi, kid. Hey, Penny, how are you? Um, but also, I was very excited today because my new mini catalog came in the mail. Um, so as demonstrators, we get to get catalogs early. So they always mail us a complimentary one uh, about a month before it goes live for customers. And so customers can start ordering from this September 2nd. I cannot show you the inside, only the beautiful cover. I mean, seriously, loving these houses. Uh, lots and lots of good stuff in here. In fact, I have not placed my pre-order yet, which is another thing I get to do as a demonstrator. Uh, order early. So that's awesome too. So if you don't like waiting for your goodies, come join our team. <laughs> uh, and then you can get this right off the bat. But um, I'm going to have to bring this upstairs when I'm done with my live. And uh, the Stamper Man and I will sit down and hash out our wish lists. <laughs> so, and I'll get to order some stuff. So I got it early. So we're going to be making uh, my tree card from over the weekend and absolutely love this one. Uh, I used the country, country woods paper again, the wood tone here. Um, absolutely thought this was great. There's a, a group that uh, I'm, you know, in on Facebook because there's a hundred of them, right, that we're all in. Um, but this particular one is a color challenge group. And so this was the color combination for August. And I was like, oh, I can do that. And I'll pull out that paper again because it's got the um, basic gray in it. So that's where I started and then decided, you know, wild wheat again, right? First time I used it last week and then bam, using it again already. So um, let's start with that tree because that's what I want to kind of show you tonight is if you haven't seen, these stencils or masks, we call them masks at Stampin' Up. They're basically stencils. Uh, if you haven't seen these in action yet, I'm gonna give you a, uh, a peek into how they work. They're very easy. And you might be wondering why I have blue tape on my glass mat, and I will show you in a minute, but I wanna center my cardstock so you can see it. Okay, so where's, oh, there we go. I'm gonna put down just a, little bit of stamp and seal on there because uh, I don't want my cardstock to move while I'm doing this and that'll peel right off of that glass mat no problem okay so we are using a bundle tonight called the frosted forest so we have a couple I don't know two three of these bundles that have these masks in them um, and they are gorgeous I've seen them in action and this is the first one I've gotten so this bundle includes the stamp set, the dies, and these masks or stencils. So, um, and the masks actually work with this tree and they work with this tree. We're gonna be making this tree tonight. So let's get started with that. So first what I'm gonna do is actually do the stenciling part of the tree. So, each of these trees has three different masks and they are this, these are numbered one, two, three. The other ones are A, B, C. So you know which order to use them in. I'm actually only gonna be using one and two for this one. So no rules, you do what you want. <laughs> so what I decided to do, because I'm gonna die cut this afterwards, I just wanna kind of get it towards the bottom. And that, you'll notice there's a little notch up here. 
And so you can actually, if you're working like on grid paper or something, you can pencil in that little notch and then you know how to line up your next stencil when you go. So I'm just gonna put that uh, tape down and then I know to just kind of butt it up against that tape. Okay, let's grab our wild wheat and our um, blending brush. So you can do this with our spritzers, you can do the blending brushes, you could do the sponge daubers, you could probably just do ink pads right over them. I prefer to use the blending brushes when I'm doing these. And when I start here, I wanna go very light touch on this trunk, because I'm only gonna use the wild wheat color to make this two-toned tree. And that's it. That's all the color I'm putting on that trunk. I love that. Um, the other thing I love about these when I'm done, I'm going to bring them upstairs and just rinse them right off with cold water. You don't need to scrub or anything like that. Our um, inks are water based, so they just rinse right off of this, you know, like plastic. And it's fabulous and easy to use. Okay, so now we're going to put that next one up. Again, I'm just going to line it up with my tape. And you can see. Well, maybe you can't, but if you see those little kind of lines there, right, the little branch pieces, if you will, they line right up with all those. So even if I didn't have my tape down and if I forgot to make a mark, I'd probably get pretty close on um, getting that right. All right, so now I'm going to go in a little more heavy handed. And I am going to kind of brush up because I don't want to. Um, bend those little pieces. Again, if I mentioned this a few weeks ago, I love working on the glass mat with my blending brushes because I can pick up that ink that I've daubed off right off the mat. So I'm not wasting any. And I'm also not making another piece of paper all dirty and then having to throw it out after a while. <laughs> I can just wipe that right off. If you were watching a couple of weeks ago when I did that little kind of flicking technique with my um, alcohol markers, and I was telling you that, you know, oh, it'll wipe right off of the glass mat, and then it didn't right away. The, um, I did use some hand sanitizer, came right off. So I was correct. <laughs> But if you were watching and you were wondering how that happened, it, I was right. So there we go. So just the same color of ink, but you have a very, very pronounced, you know, lighter and darker to it. And that's why I didn't do the three layers, because I felt like I didn't know how much darker I could go with one color ink. <laughs> so I thought it's best just to stick with two layers. Okay. So that is our tree to start with. Let's clean that little bit of ink off my mat so I don't get it all over. And then I want to grab the stamp set. We're going to stamp over with that detail stamp of the tree. And this is where this stamp set, just this whole bundle, just blew me away. So again, this is really easy to line up. Yeah, the gallons of hand sanitizer, exactly. So if you ever have trouble when you are trying to line up like two-step stamping and things like that, I've got a little trick for you. Lay your, if it's a photopolymer stamp, uh, lay your photopolymer stamp over the image just where you want it. And then pick it up with your block. And what I'm going to do is line up the bottom of my block with the bottom of my cardstock. So now when I go to stamp it, the edges of the block won't kind of distort my, you know, vision and make me miss. Because <laughs> I actually did miss on my, uh, on my Friday card, but it was close enough for jazz. So... <laughs> Okay, so I can line that up with the bottom. Now I know it's right to the bottom. And voila, 
look at all that like dimension you get out of that. I just love this bundle. So amazing. This color is magical, Penny. I like how did I not use wild wheat until now? I know I'm not an earth tone girl, but man, it is it is won me over, I'll tell you that. Pretty happy with it. All right, do I have any other? Nope, no more wild wheat we're using tonight. So that's that. Okay. So I believe what I'm going to do is next week I will uh, I will have even more stuff to show you with this bundle because it's really amazing all the things you can do. Um, you know, you can use the stamp set by itself. You can use it with just the dies. You can use it with just the masks. You can use the masks and the dies together. Like so many different combinations you can do. So grab my. Uh, my trusty uh, big boss. <laughs> and let's die cut that tree out. So we're using everything tonight. We're using stamps and dies and masks. But only two of the masks. <laughs> so I do have a little bit of seal still on the bottom of that tree. So it shouldn't be a problem. I usually use a glue dot, but I forgot to bring any over with me. So. Seal it is only on the bottom and it's on a spot we're not going to use. So whatever. <laughs> it's. Did I? Yes, I am missing a piece. <laughs> I'm missing my top plate. Why didn't you guys tell me? <laughs> oh, here's a good here's a good tutorial for you. You're. Little plates here will tell you exactly the sandwich you need. So I need a number one plate. I need a number two plate. Then I need a number three plate. Then I put the cardstock with the die down. And then another number three plate. I was missing that. One three plate. I'm like, this is not die cutting. This is definitely not thick enough. <laughs> and there we are. Now I'm messing up my floor too. I almost took a picture of my stamping area yesterday because it was uh, quite the hurricane kind of stamping session. So I was making more samples to show you. So stick around because I have different samples to show you using the same layout that I used for this card. So it's a nice way to remind you that once you have a layout that you like, like just switch out colors or papers or stamps or whatever, and it'll be a whole different thing. All right, so there is our die cut tree, love it. Let's start putting stuff together. All right, so first we wanna stamp our sentiment and I love um, papers like this where they're a little more neutral and lighter in the background. So you can stamp your sentiment right on there instead of having to grab another piece of paper and die cut it or, you know, whatever. You can just stamp right on there. And I often forget that you can just stamp right on your designer paper. Silly me. Like you don't always have to have a piece of white for your sentiment. It could be a different color. It could be pattern paper. And we are gonna stamp this in misty moonlight. Because that is the second color of our color challenge for August. The first was wild wheat, and now we're going misty moonlight. We're making this a nice birthday card. And I love this card for birthdays because you could send it to anybody. Male, female, non-binary, whatever, right? It doesn't look too girly. It doesn't look too boy-y. <laughs> that doesn't sound right but it works for everybody, especially if they love trees or nature. Okay, I'm gonna do a little bit of, oh, first we wanna do the ribbon. All right, I got some tricks for you on the ribbon. <laughs> that did look like a brand new plate. That's because what I've started to do is use the same plate on the bottom continuously and use the same plate on the top and not switch them and then once the bottom one gets really grody and needs to be changed, I just flip the top one to the bottom and grab a new one for the top. 
So my top ones always look pretty nice now. <laughs> okay, so I am using not the pink ribbon. This is a combo pack of petal pink and white, and it's got this cool diagonal stripe to it, which I love. And you're saying to yourself, but that's a blue ribbon on your card. Yes, it is. Let me show you how to do that. <laughs> so this is a nice way if you don't have um, a millionaire's ribbon budget, which I do not. This is a nice way of getting a lot of different colored ribbons. So I'm going to take my white ribbon. And we'll just cut off a chunk of that. Because I don't want the color to bleed into the rest of it. And I'm gonna grab my Misty Moonlight uh, Stampin' Blends, my alcohol marker. And you're gonna use the brush tip and you're gonna use the side of it. And you're just gonna go right down your ribbon and it just soaks up all that good ink. Now, before we had our blends, we used to do this with our ink pads and we'd like draw it across the ink pad and it was a mess. And it kind of was wet for a little bit and took a little bit of drying time. <laughs> or people would dye them. They would actually put like um, water or alcohol in a little dish. And then they would take the reinkers and drop it in. And I'm like, no, I'm not about that. Everything has to be able to be pretty much used immediately. I don't, you know, <laughs> I am not into drying time. <laughs> so... I just do both sides of this because I don't know which side's going to end up up top, right? So now we have Misty Moonlight Ribbon. Da, 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 da. Love it. And it was very easy to do and very no mess. And it's already dry. So let me cut off a little piece here to use for the front. I'm going to show you another little trick with ribbon here that I love. So, you know, you all know if you've been following me at all that I love to use tear and tape to secure my ribbon because it's a good strong tape. So, where the ribbon is kind of trying to pull your cardstock layers apart, this will bind it really well. But it's also that two sided, right? So, it's holding the ribbon down there. But then when I peel off the backing, it's also going to hold this layer to the layer of cardstock below it. And then I will put a little bit of seal in between. Oh, I just replaced this seal cartridge yesterday and it's gliding so smoothly. I love a new refill. And then we're just gonna pop that right down on the blue, on the misty moonlight. Oh, I just love it when everything coordinates. And then I've got just a thick white layer. One of the things I love about thick white cardstock is that you don't have to have an extra piece for the inside to write on. It's already white in there. So that saves you on a little bit of weight as well. So if you've got like a multi-layered card, um, you don't have a lot of weight to it. You don't have another layer. <laughs> A little bit in each corner. Okay, so that base is all nice and together now. So now we need our, there they are. I'm like, I know I brought my dimensionals over. <laughs> we need dimensionals for the tree because it wouldn't be a card from me if it didn't have dimensionals on it, right? So we'll just put a few on and then I am actually going to like all of these side pieces are all adhesive too, so use them. And I need a skinny little one for the trunk. So yeah, I, I use every bit of my dimensional sheets. I cut them, I tear them, whatever. So this guy is bigger than our uh, blue layer, so he sticks out and I kind of like that about him. <laughs> <laughs> and then we're going to do what I call a faux bow. So same ribbon. And this is why I did not attach that ribbon on the top. I'm just going to slip that under. 
And we're just going to tie a knot. Voila. And the nice thing is, if you wanted it to be more to the right, you could just slide it down that ribbon. Or if you wanted it to be more to the left, you could just slide it down this way. And I did want it to be a little more to the left. And then I'll just trim the tails. And it looks like I can tie an awesome, you know, knot, bow, whatever, but it's really pretty simple. And I do want to have these diagonals go in the same way as the diagonals on the ribbon. There we go. Now, the last thing we need, some bling, right? So we've got my favorite uh, neutral adhesive back sequins, because you know I love those. And because that wild wheat turns out looking kind of gold, we're going to use the gold ones. Make our little triangle around the sentiment, because that side just needs a little more color. And there we go. Voila! Thank you, Joan. Good morning. Good morning, good evening. I'll be like the Truman Show. Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Is that how he says it? I can't remember now. Um, okay, a couple little things before I show you the samples um, with the same layout is I finally got to do a fun little thing. Thanks, Penny. Um, that we've been we've been so busy. Uh, back in April. Uh, Stampin' Up! gave us a what they call a sales challenge, and really it's just an ordering challenge for some people. <laughs> um, basically, if you ordered or sold a dollar more than you did last April, you got this free pack of designer paper and a virtual event with them to make some projects with it. So these are the three projects I finally sat down and made over the weekend. Absolutely love this. This paper, this cute little gift bag out of a half a sheet of paper. And this paper is actually the same design as the Countryside Inn paper that's in the catalog, but that one's blue and this one's all in pinks. So it's a very different look. And then I've got this uh, Thoughtful Wishes bundle, which is the same one that the Stamper Man used on Friday. So really cute, really simple cards but really fun. I just, I just love this paper so much and I've got plenty left. So I'll be doing some more fun things with that, but I wanted to show you that. Another little perk of being a demonstrator is you get to get involved in things like that. Also remember that it's August. And so then you can redeem your coupons that you earned last month. If you haven't already, um, make sure you do that by, I would say by the 30th, it says the 31st, but get it done by the 30th. You don't want to get right up on the deadline. Okay, samples, right? <laughs> I do want to show you the cute samples. So this is the first one I pulled out, and this is using the um, in-color paper. So this is the peach pie and that cute little guy from the Rainy Days set. Um, I'm not even sure if that's the name of the stamp set, but I just love this bunny. So he got all colored in in peach pie and pecan pie. Apparently we like pie around here. So, but yes, yeah, same layout. I did not have a ribbon to match this color. So what I did was just cut a quarter inch strip of pecan pie cardstock and put it in that same area. We've still got our sentiment right on the paper. We've still got the bling. We've got a focal point over here. So same deal, right? Thank you. I know that bunny. Yeah, I love that bunny and pie. <laughs> yes. Right? Seems like a good thing. Okay, next we have the uh, Friendly Fins, I think is what it's called. And this bundle, this is the most fun I've had with it yet. Um, so this particular paper is, I think, the Bright and Beautiful paper. And um, I've got another card to show you with that paper. And that's really more indicative of what the set looks like. But the back uh, of a lot of them have this kind of wash on it. And when I saw that, I thought immediately, water, right? So... We've got our lobster friend and our dolphin and some fish. And then what I did, and I don't know if you're going to be able to see it on camera, but I did use some Wink of Stella to make waves. I used it on the dolphin. I brushed the coral with it and the lobster. So whoever gets this card is indeed going to be a little sparkly, very fun. And so you'll notice I've still got my focal point. I've still got my... Um, 
uh, sentiment up here, but I didn't really do a straight line. I kind of had the coral and that little stamped coral do that for me, make that kind of a horizontal line-ish. <laughs> so that's another thing you can remember when you're doing layouts is you can change them any way you want. So then we went back to the main kind of layout. Um, and this is also the bright and beautiful paper. This is more what a lot of the pack looks like, really bright, vibrant stripes and bubbles and dots and things like that. Um, so I pulled out the pretty peacock and made a pretty peacock truck with some uh, lemon lime twist presents because they're clearly going to a party of some sort, right? So and again, another little ribbon. And this one was fun. It covered up a nice little mistake because when I stamped the gifts, I meant to use a different punch and then I decided on a circle punch and I didn't have enough on the bottom to actually do a whole circle. So that just tucks nicely under the ribbon and nobody knows except for all of you. <laughs> so that's my little slew of cards with the same layout. Do you have a favorite? I wanted to remind you also that in August, um, 14 of our designer papers are on sale, including the Country Woods and the Bright and Beautiful. So that's a great way. If you haven't used your coupons yet, definitely take advantage of that sale. It's like double dipping, right? Um, and if you have used your coupons or you didn't earn any coupons, that sale still applies. Those 14 different papers are 15% off all month the end of the month and there's no limits and there's no minimums so if you want to get one pack of paper get one pack of paper if you want all 14 or if you want six of one maybe you got a big project or a wedding coming up that you're you know making invitations for or something go it go for it <laughs> so all right let me come up here and talk to you for a second that is all I have for tonight. I'm hoping that you got inspired, maybe learned some new tricks, um, maybe saw that I make mistakes too and can't figure out how to give enough room for a punch. <laughs> Just like everybody else, right? So, but if you did pick up some tricks or some inspiration, I'd love it if you'd share this video so your friends and family could pick those up as well. Until next week, I'm still Nan Gerlitz. Happy stamping. <laughs>